All right, we're going to use WDS to capture an image from our Windows 7 Enterprise workstation and put it on our WDS server so we can deploy it to other workstations. We're going to go through some basic steps on configuring WDS. Well, one of the first things since we're running this on a Mac and using VMware Fusion, uh, something that Robert ran into is we have DHCP running on our host only networks through VMware and you might need to run this command. Um, the command is sudo kill-15 space, use the tick, which is by the number one key, sudo cat var run vmnet dash dhcpd vmnet one dot pid, or pid, and then use the tick again by the number one. What that does is it will kill the DHCP process that is, and I don't have it running right now because I've already run it, but that'll kill the DHCP process, the, the DHCP server that's in VMware Fusion. So that's what that command will do. So you might want to run that if your workstation is getting an IP address, uh, like a 192.168.128 address, that's coming from VMware's internal DHCP servers for the host only network. Because our host only network already has a DHCP server which is our Windows 2008 server, which I have running here. Okay, one other housekeeping step in here, we want to activate Windows. I've already activated mine, but in order to activate Windows, you're going to need a license key. So in your address bar, uh, on my server, 192.168.10.44, you'll see the, oops, you'll see the, uh, under student share, I have product keys, and in here we have the Windows 2008 product key. You're going to want to enter that in and activate Windows. And again, you're going to need your smooth wall firewall to get access up to the internet uh, that needs to be up and running. All right. Next step is we're going to need our uh, Windows 7 DVD installed on our Active Directory server. So I went and chose the ISO image Windows 7 Enterprise uh, DVD and we're going to be using that to grab the boot image so our workstations when we boot them up will use the uh, uh, boot image that comes with Windows 7 so we can capture an image moving on now finally to get to the role we've already installed the WDS role and you can do that by just going to roles and click add roles if you don't have it already you should uh, so the WDS service should be there, and if we click under servers, we should see the first, our actual server should be listed there, and it's not configured, which it shouldn't be. First thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click on it and select configure server. And then hit next. And this is the location where we're going to have the remote install server. This is where an entire image of a workstation is going to be stored. So it typically will get large in size. So you're going to want to put this either on a partition or a drive that's going to have plenty of space. And uh, we have in our virtual machine here plenty of space to do what we're going to do. So leaving it as the C drive in this default location is fine. But if this were on another server, you might want it on a different partition if it were in a live environment. So we're going to leave it C, remote install, and doesn't it's not there, uh, and it's recommending that we have this on a separate disk. So here it's already giving us that warning that I just gave you. Okay, so on here we need to read carefully because this is, WDS is running on the server that also has DHCP. So it says, if DHCP is running on this server, check both of the following checkboxes. Do not list it on port 67 and configure DHCP option 60 for Pixie client. Pixie is the, the pre-execution boot loader on Windows, actually on any computer, that boots and looks to the DHCP server to get information on how to load an operating system. So we want to configure this DHCP server to have those options, those DHCP options, so the workstations when they boot will actually point to our WDS server to find an operating system to load. Because typically the operating system loads from where? On a computer. 
the hard drive or maybe even a CD-ROM drive, right? So this way, when we enable Pixie Boot or Network Boot on our workstations, they're going to look to the DHB server for a file and a server to pull an operating system from so it can boot an operating system. And that's what we are putting inside of our WIDs right now is that operating system that they're going to be booting from. So we want to check both of these. If you don't have a DHB server running on the server that has WIDs or WDS, you don't check these. But you're going to have to configure this option 60 and put PXE client on your DHB server. So that you would have to do manually. By checking this, it'll do it for us. All right, so this option has a little more security. Uh, because you can install Windows through WDS, or, or actually image a computer, a lot of times you want to secure this down. So this option here is saying, do you want to respond to any client computer, meaning any computer, even if you brought yours in from home and plugged it into your corporate network, it would allow that computer to load an operating system from WDS, from our server here or respond only to known client computers, meaning you as an administrator have to preemptively type in all the MAC addresses of all your workstations and say only allow those. Okay, so I'm sorry, the first one was do not respond. And the last one is to respond to all, meaning that we're gonna allow all computers to connect. So for the sake of this lab, to keep it simple, we're gonna do this option and we're not gonna require administrative approval, meaning that it'll boot and then the workstation will sit there and say waiting, waiting, waiting until you go into the WDS screen and say yes, approve this client. So that's a cool option, makes it a little easier to uh, approve who you're going to have booting into your WDS server. So it's a little better than respond only to known clients because we don't have that list built yet. So choose that option, respond to all clients and hit next. And uh, here's an option to add images to server now. We're going to go ahead and do that because we're ready. We have our Windows 7 DVD in the drive. And we're going to hit finish. And they want us to know where this is. So I forget often, but we're going to be loading the boot.wim file. And that should be on our computer and our DVD. And I think it's under... They hide it. Bump with sources. No, there's no images there. Where is that located? That should be in the sources folder. Right there, there we go. So it's on the DVD drive under the sources folder. There we go, I found it. So again, it's under the sources. And the image group, this is, you can choose how you wanna group your images. Um, for example, if you have images for one organization and you're using imaging for another organization, you could have two different groupings. Uh, if you're grouping it by department, you could do that. So this one, we're just going to leave the default image group one. That's just the name that it defaults to. We'll leave it there. And this is where it's going to pull it from. It's going to pull one image and one boot image. So it's going to pull an install image and a boot image. The install image we really don't need, but we might as well pull it and we'll let it do its thing. Hit next. And what it's doing now is it's copying the uh, boot.wim file and all of its contents. What we're essentially doing is we're creating a bootable folder on our server that would look like a we're booting from a DVD. So that way over the network, workstations can boot and load an operating system 
from our server. So it's copying those files. And if we were to take a look at them while they're copying, go to our computer, C drive, remote install, and see we have our boot SDI, x86, 64-bit, and images, there's nothing in there right now. So this is where all the files and stuff are getting stored right now is in the boot folder. So this is where files are getting copied to right now. So I'm going to stop the video here and uh, we'll have another video to move on to the next steps on creating a capture image.